Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, and welcome to a Sunday night extended opening of the V Pub. A little bit of a stunt I pulled there. I've always made a joke that I don't actually need to be hosting these things that you guys would be happy to gather um, in your droves and hang out in the lounge and have nobody guiding you or hosting you at all. You would just help yourself to whatever's behind the bar and happily chat along. I hope everybody's well. Fantastic to welcome so many of you again. Uh, just to let everyone know, regular VPUBs go out on Thursday nights. These Sunday night sessions are a bit more laid back. Um, no structure, no guests, just me hanging out. It's because kind of I'm stuck at home the same as everyone else. And there's not much else I can do. The only thing I can do to contribute anything at all, really, outside of my own four walls, is to do this. I hope it brings you a bit of distraction from these crazy uh, and continuing times. Um, but as is the rule, <laughs> no C word if we can avoid it. Lots of orange flashing up here. I'm going to jump straight into the lounge tonight and welcome you guys. I'm going to interact as much as I can with all the fantastic whiskey folk. Whiskey Stream Fire is in. Good to see you, Tony. He's saying, hey, Roy, and happy Easter. Uh, Chris B is saying, hiding, Roy. Absolutely, Chris, I was. Daniel Vermas is here. Good to see you, Daniel, as well as Gino, Menno, Kilted Moose Scott, Superb, Orange Wheel, Whiskey Mystery, Andy C over in East Bride, Whiskey Loving Pianist. Uh, haircut looks clean. <laughs> This is my wife's handiwork. <laughs> we um we had some fun earlier today. Uh, we my wife had her hair cut by one of my daughters earlier in the week, and today my wife cut my hair and my son's hair. She did a decent job, I have to say. No closer inspection, of course, but I feel better. It's it's much tidier. <laughs> I was a wee bit nervous. Molasses is here. Good to see you, my friend. Our baggy is here. Good to see you too. Ben Demon Hunter too slow. Lee Kerwin, Radek, Scott Mills, Eric Waite. Uh, Jean de la Cuisine, uh, Pete Head, Jim, Whiskey Novice, I'm actually sipping one of your samples, Jim. I opened this as I was getting ready. This is a, a Douglas Lane Scallywag. This is a Red Nose Reindeer Edition, 48% ABV, and very tasty as too. It's a cracker. And a cracking dram. To enjoy as we started things this evening. Kresimir is saying, evening Roy, nice haircut, looking sharp. <laughs> so the reason that everybody knows about this is because I've been, uh, I was talking about it inside Patreon and uh, talking about how we're going to deal with it. Lots of people are just getting the clippers out and doing buzz cuts and shaving their heads and doing all things like that. But I think all of the guys that are doing that have much more um, buzz cut friendly head shapes, let's say. <laughs> my wife and my kids wouldn't let me do that. Hey, Tony is saying, I'm a wee bit disappointed that you did not get it all off. <laughs> Sorry, my friend. When Jim is saying, had some earlier, it's a lovely wee dram. It definitely is, Jim. It really is. So, yes, these are a wee bit about these Sunday night sessions. They're about just taking a little pocket of time, relaxing for a little bit. And where the topics and the themes and guests, of course, mean that I can be distracted, kind of trying to share some ideas or concepts with you, the Sunday night sessions means that I can hang out uh, with you guys a wee bit more. Um, and uh, just have a, a bit more kind of whiskey community time when everybody's kind of stuck. And I'm going to keep these Sunday night uh, sessions going as long as you guys enjoy them and as long as uh, I I can keep doing them on a Sunday night as well. Sunday night is the only night that's working out for me just now in terms of family and uh, everything else. Uh, but uh, the Thursday night V-pubs are sacrosanct and they'll continue to come along on Thursday nights. I'm doing them weekly just now, so they used to go out every, uh, twice a month, every two weeks, second and last Thursday of the month, but just now, for the same reasons, I'm bringing uh, weekly content. So if you've got any ideas, if you've got anything that you think would make a good subject or topic for a Thursday night VPUB, share it with me because I'm rapidly going through, let's say, the low-hanging fruit of the list of topics that I have. There's lots of topics on that list there that I'm going to need to do a bit of work first. I'm going to need to line up guests. I'm going to need to buy whiskey for it, perhaps. So there's there's a lot of topics and subjects that I want to push off down the road a little bit. Um, and the ones that I can do now, I'm, I'm rattling through quite quickly. Uh, one of the topics I'll talk to you about in a wee second, I shared it with my patrons, and I just want to ask if it's something that would interest you, or if it's maybe it's just something that's only of interest to me. 
Uh, Hellswood is here. I think that's Helen. Fantastic, Helen. Good to see you in. She's saying, evening, Roy. Tunnel Amendi is here saying, cheers to you with my uh, Glenn Farkless 25, would that be? A GF. Um, fantastic value dram that is as well, Tunnel. Um, uh, whoops. The chat jumps again. Richard Hall is saying, evening, Aquavite. Evening, everyone. And uh, evening, NWA. That's interesting. NWA. Um, it wasn't Simon Ray that pointed out who was I speaking to. Um, I think it was James Burgoyne. Um, what's happening it, through this this channel, this community that's building around the channel, is that people are working out when they live quite close to each other. And that was the idea of the Aquavite Barflies group on Facebook, to help people take it out of a kind of virtual technology-based environment and put a Facebook page together where people could hook up and uh, share when they're going to events, tasting nights, clubs, distillery trips, visits to different countries, whatever it may be, and hook up with like-minded people along the way. Um, but there are clubs that are being born out of this. There's the, uh, uh, I think it's the Heart of, of England Whiskey Alliance, I think, that came out of the YouTube community. I think Vin at No Nonsense Whiskey is involved in that. Uh, there's the London Whiskey Club, of course, where the community that, that started the London Whiskey Club was formed in the chat room in this channel. And I'd been heard recently, it was James, I'm sure it was James Burgoyne, was telling me about NWA, the Nottingham Whiskey Alliance as well. Simon Ray, uh, Fraser Bell, um, James himself, as some other people are getting together to start that up in that area as well, just east of the Midlands. Fantastic. If you, are, if you have desires of doing something like that, if you would like to get together, okay, it's difficult right now, but, but even right now you can still do virtual things. You can get together on Zoom or whatever your favoured uh, technology platform might be. If you think I can help, please reach out. I'd be more than happy to try and help connect folk in the community and get people sharing and enjoying whiskey together. Uh, Pete Head is saying, thank you, have to mention the thumbs up again. Uh, they, they are not seem to come all by itself. Uh, the thumbs up are just, um, they're helpful. They are helpful. If Don't feel that you need to thumbs up something. <laughs> I forget when I watch a video and enjoy it. Usually, if I'm if I'm mindful, I, I do give it a like, a thumbs up, and it helps me as well because if I want to recall it again or go back to it, I look at my liked videos playlist, a private playlist eh, on my on my YouTube account, and it helps the creator. It helps the thumbs up is one part of the algorithm that YouTube decides whether or not to promote that channel, that content, that video. Um, but it's not necessary, honestly. Um, I It's nice to kind of ask for it, I suppose, and remind people, but it's not a condition of enjoyment. James is saying, hey, Roy, it's Nottingham Whiskey Association, hopefully meeting virtually soon. Did I make a mistake? What did I say? Nottingham Whiskey Association. Um, uh, apologies if I got that wrong. Hey, Scott says, dummies are in. Fantastic, Scott. Good to see you. Saying afternoon, everyone. Hi, Roy. Um, I don't know how long you're going to be able to stay around, Scott, but I want to mention that fantastic fundraiser you guys put together the other night. It was wonderful. I've got a uh, Tony, uh, sorry, it was, it was Terry Miller, wasn't it? I've got his coins here. So the Scotch Test Dummies um, got together with Dalmore, actually, to host an event, a virtual tasting event, um, as a kind of background theme while the uh, raised money for uh, the American Nurses Association, frontline health workers in the States as well. This is Scott and Bart out in Kansas making videos in, in a spare room in their house, much like I do. They do a lot more content than I do. They put out at least two videos a week. They're putting out live streams as well. They are responsible for a lot of the core things that the community on YouTube is is revolves around now. A lot of the culture, such as these coins, um, live streaming, collaboration, connecting and bringing uh, like-minded whiskey folk together. That very much started in that channel coming out of Kansas there, uh, Scott and Bart's channel. But they got together, they've done fundraisers in the past, but they got together to do an American Nurses fundraiser the other night. And they, just during the live stream, I believe they raised well over $3,000 based on donations. But they also auctioned off some things as well. They auctioned off a lot of their own merchandise and, and bits and pieces. And I donated a set of uh, coins, matching number coins. This is a batch one coin. Uh, these are long gone. There were only over 250 of these. Um, a batch two coin, number 39. And obviously 
the, the one that's still available is uh, batch three. Um, I was super impressed. Uh, Terry, I think he pledged up close to 300, perhaps just $300 for this set of coins in order of that good cause. It was amazing. I was blown away. Um, Daniel Vermas is saying, I don't mind a Budapest whiskey club, but there is no one near. If uh, healthcare is uh, close to your heart, uh, you can still donate to their cause. Just hop over to the Scotch Test Dummies channel and there'll be details on that live stream that went out about how to donate to that. And if you're interested in hooking up with Daniel Vermas in Budapest and getting together to share a dram with him when all this nonsense lifts, I suggest that you speak to Daniel. I can vouch for the guy. I've met him in real life and he's a gentleman to hang out with. McCann Fine Rare is saying, cool but geeky topic for a VPUB. The role of yeast and or barley in whiskies. Um, I have to say, uh, let's see, uh, Saccharomyces uh, cerevisiae. Uh, I'm, no, I'm not pronouncing that well. It looks like a Latin name for a probably a yeast strain rules. Um, I would say that that is a good idea. I've got, a barley was always one that was a potential topic, especially when I was speaking to Waterford last year. Um, it could still be something to talk about, but it's something that I would be pulling a guest in for. There would need to be a, a decent time frame to pull that one together um, to, in order to make a decent job of it. Uh, I'm interested. I'm interested to try and work out just how much of a role uh, the barley strain has in, in the final spirit. And of course, how much of, the, of that um, can be affected by the yeast. A lot of people talk about distillers yeast, the, which is the modern preferred yeast, not being nearly as good as perhaps an older, more traditional brewer's yeast uh, that was used in the past. Uh, so aye, any kind of topics that you think might be beneficial, share with me and, and let me know what you think. Nathan Clark is here saying Aquavite. So you've got yourself some uh, TX Whiskey Festival blend. Uh, yes, uh, is that from um, the Crowded Barrel? Uh, is that the ones you're talking about? Uh, assuming number one, or did you get a hookup for number two as well? Um, I'm not actually sure what you're talking about now. I think you must be talking about these. This is the Crowded Barrel uh, Alliance series. These are kind of a, this is the Crowded Barrel, which is Whiskey Tribe Crowded Barrel. Um, the Whiskey Vault, essentially. Um, ah, Texas Whiskey Festival blend, yes. So no, this is an Iron Root Republic one, and this is what you're talking about. And this is batch. Where would it tell me the batch? There's nothing written on this the, the label here. Age 24 months, blended bourbon whiskey, 116 proof, 58% alcohol. It just says this is Texas craft. Yes, these were. Uh, I picked these up when I was over in Texas last year, and uh, I think it was Josh uh, that had put these aside for me. Um, and I don't know much about them yet, and certainly I haven't opened them to enjoy them yet. Is that what you're asking about, Nathan? Um, but yes, that's what those are. And an Iron Root Republic one as well. These are essentially very similar in concept to uh, an independent bottling in the in the UK or Europe. Penny Keen is in. Good to see you, Penny. I hope that you and Nick are doing very well. She's saying it's a bit too early for whiskey in Auckland. I know. So I made the mistake in a previous stream thinking that you guys were 12, 12 hours behind us, but you're 12 hours ahead. So it's already Monday morning, Penny, right? Um, <laughs> so I've just let everybody see that I've got a bit of a mullet going on at the back. <laughs> <laughs> and Gregor is saying, Lynn Duff, love that you left a mullet hanging there. I'd love to see some of the haircuts that's coming out through this uh, home haircutting thing that's going on just now. It was very, very difficult to find, to buy a set of clippers to do to do the job. Um, they'd sold out everywhere. Zach Andrews is saying, those are the first releases from last year. Ah, thanks, Zach. Thank you so much. Um, Zach, I heard recently that um, your other half is also a nurse. Um, so I can imagine that the Scotch Test Dummies fundraiser was something that was quite close to your heart, my friend. I hope you're doing very well. Vlad has bought me a jam, a dram and said, cheers, Roy. Thanks for tonight's VPUB. Vlad, you are very, very welcome. Your gratefulness is enough, but thank you for your virtual dram and slancher. 
I'm always struck that when we raise a glass, we toast to our health. Slanch is literally that. McAllen Finery is saying a cool yeast guest could be Dr. Bill Lumsden. Even though his latest yeast experiment, Glen Morangy, was a bit of a failure. Um, yeah, one of the releases, one of their annual releases that they came out with was a, a, a yeast strain that they had cultivated locally. Um, I, I don't know if uh, if, uh, if uh, Dr. Lumsden would would grace the VPUB, but you never know. You never know. Nathan Clark is saying, yes, hopefully I'll see, see you at the Bastards Ball in the fall. September. Um, I wonder what's happening there. I, I know the date's been released and things like that. Uh, I was in touch with uh, Daniel recently on something completely different. Um, so, yeah, that would be amazing. Uh, it's always amazing to go over there and hang out. Dave Cummins is in. Fantastic to see you, Dave. I hope you're keeping well. Dave was supposed to be coming to join us and hang out at uh, Glen Goyne this year, but obviously that's been put off. Aquavita, I have not paid for a haircut since 1990 when I joined the, the Marine Corps, even clipping it myself, been clipping it myself ever since. Yeah, it's maybe something I could get, I could try and get quite good at. I hurt my thumb on the door. This, uh, I don't want to show you up close in case it does actually focus on it because it's not very nice to look at. This thumbnail is hanging on. It's hinged kind of halfway along it, one side after I caught it on my door lock on the front door uh, yesterday morning. Uh, it makes me squeamish thinking and talking about those things. Um, and it smarted a little bit throughout the day. I found that uh, a couple of paracetamol last night and some whiskey helped a bunch. Kilted Moose is saying, nothing wrong with a mullet. Coming from a guy who proudly sported a mullet back in the day. Tony Evans is saying, eh, Aquaviti, turn around. We have inside information. <laughs> are you talking about the whiskey or are you, are you talking about the back of my hair again? <laughs> it's Lynn in, perhaps. She's booby trapping the chat. She is. There you go. <laughs> My wife is in tonight, sabotaging me, no doubt. She's looking for lots of compliments based on her haircutting handiwork, no doubt. Um, she did do a, a good job, I have to say. I think I'll get away with it. Uh, great suggestion from Tabitha Adams, says Pete Head. Let's see what Tabitha is uh, asking. I guarantee it's got something to do with the haircut. Let's see, Tabitha Adams. Can he find you, Tabitha? Don't know what the suggestion was. And it's, now it's jumped again. Every now and again, just as I start to scroll ever so gradually, I'll get a huge jump. Still something that we've they've not been able to cure yet. Uh, Multi-mission men say 1987 all over again. I love your mullet. I never, ever did sport a mullet, I have to say. I've always had short hair. Uh, Gixxer Skipper Lucas saying, been buzz cutting since 1999. And Chris B says, what are you drinking tonight? Well, I, I poured another one. This is the last couple of sips left of this lovely uh, Scallywag uh, Red Nose Reindeer from Jim Ingram over at Whiskey Novice. It's Jim, uh, Jim's sharing great whiskey content on his channel, the Whiskey Novice. You'll find him on YouTube. And I'm not sure where, when he sent me that sample. I think it was perhaps at the end of last year he sent it across. But that's his wee image on the bottle there. Um, and there's no mistaking who that sample's can come from. It's fantastic that I can see and remember who that's from. But I popped and poured a little of the tomato and cask strength um, while uh, you were looking at an empty seat at the opening of this uh, V-Pub tonight. And Jimmy Legacy, like as long as the little tuft is still in front, I'm happy with the haircut. Yeah, that little tuft has been there for 20 years, perhaps, Jimmy. Uh, it's the product of a, a we call it a coos lick, a cow lick. Um, and it grows faster than any other bit of my hair. Uh, it's just, it's exactly as you'd say, it's a tuft. It's just there, it's part of it. Everyone is saying, ahoy, malt, mate. It's good to see you in as well. Everyone, fantastic to welcome you here. Rico is saying, pretty sure Kingsburns is using brewer's yeast. There's lots of um, experimentation going on with different yeasts right across the country right now. Lots of people trying different yeast strains. You've seen how it affects the the uh, the fermentation. Uh, Kingsburns, I'm sure, as you say, are probably one of them that's using a, a brewer's yeast. Um, the, the recent Kingsburns I tried was wonderfully oily, 
lots of malt, very spirit driven, very young still, four years, three years old perhaps. Um, but yes, very oily. But what interesting to see um, if what kind of flavours, because you would have to imagine that they're going to do a batch using one yeast and then do a batch using another yeast and then try and mature them in as close uh, a cask selection as they possibly can batch to batch. And then if they do see a distinct change in uh, fruitiness and flavours or whatever it may be, they may be able to over a large sample, over a large maturation over time, put it down to that. I'd really be interested to hear how some people are tackling that. Um, another dram, Zach Andrews saying thanks for the shout out for Sarah. Yes, yeah, she's a nurse and the STD stream on Friday was wonderful. I, I get choked up, I get quite emotional when I see these things, when I see people just, just ponying up and donating uh, because they can, because they can afford it, of course, but because um, it touches them. Somebody's taken the action to try and, and raise the money um, and to try and do it in a way that they're bringing some entertainment and fun and engagement as well. Uh, and the fact that people do participate and, and contribute is, is wonderful to see. I get a message from my wife. Yes, she's saying Tabitha's comment. <laughs> Aquavita, I've always been interested in bottle design and packaging and how much of that affects what we buy. Excessive design can also turn people off. HP, for instance. Good subject. Honestly, Tabitha, it's a good subject. I um, I'm in marketing. Uh, I'm, I don't have I don't specialize in any particular field. I do lots of uh, little parts, and and sometimes um, I am very very aware of how a product is marketed. And sometimes I think that sometimes a good idea can overstep, um, and it can be over presented, and it can be over egged. I, I tend to like things that are presented honestly and appropriately with a bit of style and class and uh, I like it to be clean. Um, and I think you make a very good point that bottlings like the recent releases from HP, I've said it before, are overly egged. Um, they are really gilding the lily. Um, I've just had a couple of people joining Aquavitae Barflies and a dram bought from me from Svein, Eric Yamt. I hope I'm um, pronouncing your name correctly, Svein. Uh, I hope so. He's obviously in, in Norway and he's saying Slantia, Springback 15, batch 2019 in glass. A cracker of a dram as well. But thank you very much, my friend, for your virtual dram. And Espen has joined the Aquavitae Barflies. Espen also admitted to me in a Patreon comment recently that he is uh, letting his hair grow a little bit too long right now and it's getting out of shape a bit. I think we're all going to have to go through that for a little while or, or make a decision to do some home clipping. Uh, our baggy is saying like Spring Bank. Yeah, I have to say, I, I gave on the Virtual Whiskey Festival, I gave Spring Bank a hard time. Um, by the way, Tabitha, I think it's a good topic if we talk about presentation and, and how brands are um, presenting their products. I, I love Daft Mill. I love how clean and honest and direct and just straightforward that is. And the font that's used is almost ever so slightly kind of pseudo sans serif industrial font, like of almost Victorian in style. Um, the only problem I have with Daft Mill is the bottles are far too tall. They're like candles. Um, Branding, I suppose, whiskey branding. I um, also like the new Deanston packaging. Again, that Victorian uh, style of a presentation. I, sometimes I like the whimsical thing, like uh, Craig Ellick is another very Victorian styled thing. I enjoyed uh, their rebranding. Some branding uh, looks good. Um, some rebranding, I mean, Mortlack. Mortlack was one of the most beautiful bottles of whiskey out there, the Flora and Fauna 16-year-old Mortlack. And then they brought this kind of Art Deco-style square bottles, 50 CL bottles that looked good, but I didn't feel it was appropriate for the whiskey. <laughs> and then they, they rehashed it and relaunched Mortlack again and kind of redressed some of the problems they had with the previous branding um, in a positive direction, but the branding was left a bit, I, I just, it was neither meat nor fish to me. Um, but it's amazing how subjective it is. 
Greg's Whiskey Guide is saying, hi Roy, hi everyone, sorry it was a bit busy, uh, love the Glen Morangy Alta by the way, I met Sir Bill several times. Now the Alta, I don't, I don't, was that the one with the, the local yeast strain? Lee is saying, Tabitha Adams, I love the Dalmore bottles, just a shame the stag emblem is cheaply made and prone to falling off or snapping. Yes, um, yeah, uh, Yes, I'm affected now by my relationship with Dalmore whiskey. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't have any Dalmore at home anymore. I don't have any Dalmore in the house. The last one I had in the house was a Portwood. Um, anybody that watches the recycle reviews, I guess, would pick up on on how I feel about Dalmore, and it's a shame because when you taste Dalmore in an independent bottling, it's really, really good. Um, more often than not. Marcus is saying, I like the technical style of Elsa Bay labels. Yes, I have to say Elsa Bay is quite nice, a nice bottling, um, fairly standard. And No Nonsense Whiskey is here complimenting me on my shirt choice. This is a vintage classic shirt, Evan. This is the original No Nonsense one. You've since sent me one that's also got a, a, a cool little uh, emblem on the sleeve as well. But this has got to be, I've got to had, have had this for at least two years now, and it's still in great shape. Which is why when I did when I made the Aquavite polos, I basically ripped off Vin's uh, supplier choice and I bought the exact same polo shirts because I know they're they're really robust. Cheers, my friend. Good to see you in. Uh, Art Baggy saying you have to remember that the packaging will put the overall cost up. One reason Springbank is competitive. Yeah, but as I say it on the virtual whiskey festival, I gave them a hard time for being lazy. Um, uh, the the new Springbank. You just you you forgive Springbank because of the contents inside the bottle, but I felt the previous branding with the ever so slightly uh, faded uh, Springbank when it was repeated up and down the label and it was gloss against matte, you could only see it in certain light. I thought that was really nice and quite elegant, but they rebranded and they went for the bold bright colours and things. I didn't like that as much. I think Cochran is a lovely bottling, but it. Again, I gave them a hard time for being a bit lazy. There just doesn't. There's not a lot of information on there, and it's a shame because there's lots to tell from from that distillery. It's just the way they are. It's the culture of them. Um, anybody that tuned into the V Pub on Thursday night would have maybe picked up on that. I really have to say thanks for all the support on a three hour V Pub on Thursday night. Very naive to think that Roddy and I could get through a a, a Campbelltown virtual tour and and the. VPUB time slot. I should maybe have clipped it back and just talked about a single distillery. But what I didn't want to do was to make it look like a brand ad. It had to be about the location, the region, the place. Um, but I ended up running very, very late. Uh, but I did get a lot of good feedback from it. People seemed to enjoy it and they certainly enjoyed having Roddy back again. Uh, I certainly enjoyed having Roddy on and it was great to see him back and fit. Eric Waite is here. Good to see you, Eric. Fantastic to see you in saying subject, suggested topic, resurrecting Scotch distilleries, perhaps have guests via video. Um, I did, uh, I guested on Ear Whiskey channel to discuss that topic and we covered things like Rosebank and Port Ellen and Brora. Um, but I think um, that would be a good one. Uh, I did touch on previous live streams, my opinions about Brora and Port Ellen coming back. That was, uh, on, on the whole, super excited about it. But I think, um, yeah, resurrecting new distilleries could be a nice subject, quite apart from new distilleries opening. Um, one of the subjects on my list is new distilleries. Um, talking about things like, uh, especially ones that have come to fruition now. Colhoman have been out there for a long time. Can't really call Kilholman a new distillery anymore. Likewise, Aaron. Um, but you've got things like Daft Mill that, despite opening round about the same time as Kilholman, they've only recently come to the market. They were able to leave their product to mature a lot longer, and they've uh, suddenly become a cult whiskey. And you know the prices have been driven up crazy on the secondary market. Can't get your ho can't get hold of them. I get nowhere near the last releases from Daft Mill. I've got a couple up here that are still sealed. You'll see the tall green topped bottles up there. If we talk about uh, those kind of distilleries, those will get uncorked. Um, it's a good subject to talk about, I think, uh, new distilleries and resurrecting old ones, definitely. 
Shiv is in. Shiv, you star. Good to see you. Saint Aquavite, hello, and everyone. Happy Easter. Hope everyone had a great day. I, I had a nice day today. Um, my wife set a, a, an Easter egg hunt for the kids out in the front and back garden, and the three of them went driving around. You know, my, our youngest is eight. James is eight, and Holly and Phoebe, the girls, are are. 12 now you would think that they're a wee bit old for easter egg hunts but they had an absolute blast and anything that you can do to get them outside oops anything you can do to get them outside on days like today where it's a bit sunny and they've been cooped up at home they can't really travel is great uh, so today was a lazy day but a good day i hope you're well shiv silk bang is saying last thursday's pub was up there with the best love the idea of a journey i'm sure you could fit space aid into three hours <laughs> Over 50 distilleries in three hours. We could do Dufton. We could do Elgin. You could do Craig Elliche, Aberlour. You could do all of those kind of little chunks of uh, of Speyside. Um, I've thought about it. I've thought about doing uh, the islands. I've thought about doing uh, various northern, western, eastern, southern highlands, those kind of things. Uh, but uh, Isla and Campbelltown were, seemed to me to be compact enough to, to, to pull it off. Um, but I went ridiculously over. But it was fine. I was enjoying it. Nobody seems to mind. Um, I have to say that the numbers for last Thursday's VPUB were, bar Charlie McLean and Ralphie's numbers, that was the busiest VPUB there's ever been. It went well over 300 uh, people in at the peak. And it peaks about 20 minutes in, so I guess sometime about now this will be the peak tonight so you guys are sitting at 260 just now and i've got nothing to talk to you about um and then it kind of tails off just gradually towards the end it'll tail off but even at, right at the end there was still i don't know 160 70 80 180 and after the quiz right at the end after three hours so the support that you're given the format and the support you're giving each other, that, that you're turning out in your numbers and that you're enjoying the content um, right now, uh, and you're appreciative of, of the fact that even though there's a lot of it coming out just now, you're still uh, supporting it is very, very uh, welcome. It's wonderful to see it really is. Uh, Reeking Haddock, hello, my friend, good to see you. Saying, are you planning on covering all the whiskey regions? As I've said, I think whiskey regions in general are just too big, but if you can cut it down to, so that you can give a focus for example, covering the Highlands, uh, there's no way you could that you could summarise such a vast geographical area. The same with Speyside. Um, I would separate out the islands and do the islands slightly different. So you could maybe do kind of more northern islands uh, and then more kind of southern uh, Hebridean islands. I, I, I really don't know. I it's, it's on the list to do something of that order. Uh, so you never know. It's nice to kind of just take people on that journey and uh, and give them a, a sense of not just the whiskies and the brands that are coming from the area, but a sense of place as well. That, that's kind of what I tried to do. I don't know if we actually achieved that. James Hope is here. Good to see you, James. I hope you're keeping well. He's saying, how about English whiskey? Plenty to talk about there. Might be a painful topic for a proud Scot, though. Yes, for a proud Scot, absolutely. But I'm not proud in that way. I have often been heard to say there's nothing guarantees the quality, the future quality of Scotch whiskey more than good quality English whiskey, honestly. Um, and if people are bringing a good whiskey, the source of the whiskey, honestly, to me, is incidental. I think that Scotland, um, we've got it covered. We are making lots and lots of fabulous whiskey. And in some areas, we're taking our eye off the ball a wee bit. I think we're being a bit silly. And um, but generally, as long as as uh, as the focus is on bringing quality, not trying to con people into paying far too much, thinking that it's lucrative. And um, what you want to do is you want to bring good quality whiskey at a reasonable price. And if you're making that in England and making delic delicious whiskey such as Bimber, honestly. Um, uh, we've got distilleries in Yorkshire now, we've got distilleries in the Lakes and Cotswolds, we've got St George in, in Norfolk, uh, White Peak. Um, we've got lots and lots of English producers coming on board. I mentioned one in the, the quiz last week, a circumstance distillery down in Bristol, not even seen any of their products. But you're getting this sense of this, this scene exploding south of the border as well. And there was a time that there wasn't a single malt distillery for a long, long time in England, I think. 
Um, when St. George's opened in Norfolk, I think it's probably a hundred years since they'd seen a distillery in England. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong on that, but to my memory, that seems to that seems to uh, ring true. So, James, honestly, I'd be. I think it's a great topic. What about these English whiskies? I think it's a good idea. In fact, I'm going to write it down because I don't have anything like that on the list. English whiskey. And I want to draw a wee shock emoji next to it. Neil Cochran is here. Good to see you. Neil. He's saying, how about comparing just two distilleries as a theme? Compare and contrast, something I'm always preaching about when we're enjoying whiskey together. That's a good idea. Zach Andrews is saying, is there a way to mention distilleries that need more of a mention, the ones that deserve more of a mention under the radar type stuff? We're pretty good at that, generally, I think. And if we're missing out distilleries that are bringing it, that are doing a decent job, um, I think the community are, are pretty good at bringing it to our attention. The channel should never, ever be something. It should never be a springboard for a brand. Um, I'm happy to share a brand and a good product if they're bringing good quality stuff that I feel has to be evangelized about. It has to be celebrated and shared. Absolutely. Um, but it'll never be, it'll be at my wish rather than a brand's wish. I'll want to reach out to them and bring them to you rather than them uh, coming to me and saying, uh, can we have a slot on one of your VPUBs? Um, they, they're very, very quickly told, you need to understand the way that this channel is funded is through the community. P Peter Eichen is saying, topic, very young whiskey, three year from distilleries that come make other spirits, distilleries branching into whiskey. Again, on a similar theme, there are lots of young whiskies out there that are really, really quite amazing. Look at Kilcairn's heavily peated, fabulous stuff. Um, Bimber I've already mentioned as well. I'm excited that the Azure are able to confidently start bringing out single digit age statements. Ardbeg are bringing out the wee beastie with a five year old age statement on it as well. This is all progress. The price has to be right. The quality has to be right, but it's good to see. It's good to see that people are understanding that the, the market for that um, don't really always need to be educated or told a huge story uh, or a reason why it's got a young age statement on there. It's interesting to see Graham Fraser has seen a session just on Rosebank's resurrection with Robbie Hughes, who's heavily involved. I think I would love to talk about Rosebank. I would love to talk about where they're going, what their ideas are and things like that. Maybe just a bit early for it yet. But in the future, that would excite me a lot. I would love Rosebank to come back uh, somewhere closely resembling its former self at its peak. Zach Andrews is saying, is there a way to mention? Uh, sorry, Zach, I picked that up. Fantastic. Uh, Zelenar is in saying Lowlands should be doable in one evening. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's something actually that fits that kind of under discussed. There aren't a lot there. You've got Ilsa Bay and Bladnock, and you've got lots of new distilleries in the Lowlands up in Fife. Ochentoshin and you've got Glen Kinshi and but there aren't a lot going on uh, in the lowlands but there is enough to justify uh, a resume there was there was a time uh, in the in whiskey's history where the vast majority of the bulk whiskey was made in the in the lowlands it was huge royale has just bought me a virtual dram saying e evening aquaviti and fellow fellow butterflies nice to share a dram with you again tonight this is helping us stay sane that's exactly the idea royale I hope eh, that you're enjoying it. I'd like to raise this wee glass of tomato and cast strength and say thank you very much for a virtual drama, friend. And Bill Monteith has also joined the Aquavitae Barflies group. It's just a very small way to support the channel, but it gives you a bit of uh, fun in the live chat and things because, you wow, that's very creamy eh, tonight. After that scallywag, wow, I've, that's, I've never tasted tomato cast strength like that. Now, this bottle's been open a wee while, so it has changed. That's quite amazing. Sorry, it gives you access to loyalty badges and little colourful fun emojis and things that are very custom uh, to the channel. There's also a couple of wee Easter egg emojis in there as well. There's a Scotch Test Dummies emoji and a No-Nonsense Whiskey emoji, and that's just some for you to have some fun with it. Um, but emojis can be, uh, if you feel... It's, it's been asked for me to design a 10 out of 10 emoji for the quiz. 
and and an ass hat emoji, for example, for the ass hat questions in the quiz. And um, so if you're interested in and in you've got a good idea for what an emoji could be, because so many of you have joined to support the channel, there's another couple of spaces opened up to me to design another couple of emojis. So I'd be very, I'd very much welcome your input in that. And you can see in the chat that people are using the Glen Cairn emojis that I've made, the slancha cheers and the single Glen Cairn and the upturned empty Glen Cairn to say that you're away to pour another dram. Um, so it's just all for a bit of fun. Uh, but thank you, Bill, and welcome on board. Jimmy Legg is saying, I think Donald Rance would say that we won't discuss Irish whiskey enough. It's just comfort. I mean, it's the reason I don't talk a lot about bourbon or Canadian or I. The Irish whiskey that I connect with most is is uh, because I love it. Is is single pot still Irish? I really do enjoy, and I've kind of got a decent handle on that. I'll usually have one or two spots in the house. The powers. Uh, John's Lane, I'll have a red breast or two at any one point in time. And, uh, and and I like I like having them on hand. And again, it's incidental to me that they're from Ireland, honestly. I think it's a great story, that that, that style of whiskey. Outside of that, all the malts that's coming from Ireland, um, all the uh, whiskies that's coming from, whether it's Cooley, Bushmills, Middleton, it, um, I have, uh, because it's very, very brand-driven, um, it's sometimes something that's just a wee bit difficult to keep up with when I'm having such a hard time keeping up with just the releases from the Scottish distilleries as well. For those of you who are curious why I'm sitting in the corner of the room tonight, um, I, I changed it. I was I was doing some work in the house uh, before on Friday, and I pulled it up to kind of change it to do the the tomato stream. Um, and I wasn't hosting that, I was a guest. It's much nicer, it's much easier to be a guest, I have to say. And and I decided just to leave it like this for tonight. On Thursday for the regular VPUB, it'll go back to the normal backdrop and set where you can see um, the other trinkets and things that are over there, Ralphie's jacket, Scotch test dummy stuff, Whiskey Tribe stuff, and all the bottles that have been gifted to me. Um, not all of them, but a lot of bottles that have been gifted to me by you the fantastic community when we've had a chance to meet up in real life. Looks like it's going to be a wee while this year is looking like it could be written off for that altogether. It's quite, quite, quite sad, actually. Uh, Graham Fraser St. Annandale, Borders, Clydeside, uh, New Lowland Distilleries. Absolutely. I've been down to Annandale. Um, I've not been over to Borders yet. Clydeside, I've been and visited. Uh, absolutely. Lowland Distilleries. There's a bit of a renaissance happening there for sure. Uh, may have already been floated, Royale is saying, but how about non-Scotch as a general topic sometimes? Also, lost distilleries. Lost distilleries, a great topic to talk about. It's getting a hold of the liquid to go along with it. Um, yes, good. Uh, Jeffrey, Jeff Petron is in as well. He's bought me a dram. No comment or anything, Jeff. Thank you so much, my friend. I hope you're keeping very well over there. And another wee drive has just come in, let me see, from Rucher Lax. Uh, I know that you got in touch with me directly recently, my friend. Uh, it's great to have you in, and uh, thank you for your recent Patreon support as well. Shout out to Whiskey Jason, and thanks for yesterday's blind tasting. Looking forward to the next week's Cadenheads tasting. Happy Easter to all barflies. Whiskey Jason is almost always in here in support. Um, he's one of the most reliable uh, members of the community here, and uh, and he's very very prolific on his own channel in American, sorry, in English, and German languages. Fantastic, good shout, and thank you for your drama, friend. Eric Evanson is saying, "Barfly, hey man, sorry I'm late. I would love to see you have a bourbon tonight." Well, do you know what I'm going to do? I've got my sample box here. Um, I, what I've keep meaning to do is go through this and pick out any that are kind of ones that I've picked up from tastings or uh, distillery visits or something, and just for these samples to only be community samples. But what I'm going to do when I finish this tomato is I'm going to just reach in here and pull something out blind. Um, if I don't mention it and I just put it to the side, it's because it's not something that's come from the community. I want to find the samples that you've given me. And Zach is saying, Roy, my two-year-old um, Anson 
is watching as well. He's he, all he says is Roy, <laughs> Roy. <laughs> well, I'll stay back. Anson, Anson, and I hope he can pick up Zach his name in a Scots accent. That's wonderful. <laughs> Good for you. And of course, you're out in Texas, aren't you, Zach? I think you're in uh, Houston or somewhere. Uh, um, I think it's Houston. Apologies if I'm getting that wrong. So it's going to be, you're probably six hours behind us. Um, so it's still the afternoon for you. I hope you're all doing well and keeping healthy. Wayne McCoy is here saying Aqua Vitae. Even with the current circumstances, I'm still managing to find whiskey. Managed to get a bottle of Glenmorangie Signet, my favourite, and keen to ban 12 years, Lancia. Good for you, Wayne. I have to say, Signet is quite a decadent, uh, good, nice treat of a whiskey. I haven't tried it for quite a wee while. I have have had feedback from people that say that it's kind of suffers from some batch variation, let's say. But my experience with it um, was it was it was pretty fabulous. It was a whiskey rev actually that first uh, purchased a signet. It was a huge treat. Um, I think it was at the time he bought that. It was the most expensive whiskey he'd ever bought. Um, and uh, I remember us first trying it together and us both uh, liking it a lot. But Whiskey Jason is saying, yes, he is the American in Germany. Um, yeah, a lot of content coming out from Whiskey Jason. He's a really, really busy and committed and passionate guy. Zach Andrews is saying, you just made his day. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you, Zach. Thank you so much. Gregory is saying, video theme could be memories lubricated or cemented by our preferred liquid. A love letter to whiskey moments, so to speak. Positive or moments of remembrance. Don't know how expansive that would be. Well... I pitched a, a topic to my patrons recently because it's very much going to rely on community input. Um, and it's one that I was kicking around for a while and I didn't, I wasn't really feeling it. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to pull it off, but it was emotional connection to whiskey, the emotional impact of whiskey. And I wrote a little article and I put it on Patreon and I shared it with the patrons to say, look, back on my 40th when I was in Isla, something happened to me that I'll never ever forget. And it was just a quiet wee moment. I mean, things happen to people when they go on a whiskey pilgrimage like that anyway. It happens to us all. But I was 40. Um, and I suppose I'd just had kids. The girls had come along a year or two before that when I was 38. So when you have children, you suddenly become much more emotionally volatile, I think. I think you become much more um, in tune with mortality and uh, things that matter rather than just having a great time and worrying about yourself and yourself only. So I, I, there was probably th th that time there was that kind of change was happening as well. But I was on Isla. I'd been there for Fashil with 10 of us went over together, my brother and I and eight other people. And we took a minibus to Isla for the Fashil Festival. It was wonderful. It really was. Bill, who everybody knows through the channel, Bill Dull, joined us as well. He came over from California for that trip. And I remember on the way to Ardbeg Day, so it was the last day of the festival. We'd have been finishing up to come home later that day or maybe early the next morning. It was the last day. I was probably feeling a bit sad about that. And we went to Lefroy on the way to Ardbeg. And Lefroig was practically deserted. There was very few people there. So we turned up in the minibus, we jumped out, and we're walking down to the bay at Lefroig. And everybody's just kind of doing their own thing and individually or in pairs or whatever, chatting and laughing. The air was quite still that day. It was a nice morning. Bill walked out onto the pier wall, and as, he's, as he was coming back, he made a Tai Chi karate kid style pose. And I picked up the camera and I took a photo of that. Um, and uh, as I'm, as a, it, as I took that picture, I, I just took like a big gulp of air. I just took stock of where I was and how I was feeling. And I filled up. I just started to cry in front of all my friends. I don't know I got away with it. I think I, I think I pulled it off. But it was the realization of contentment and happiness. Just that moment of saying or thinking to yourself, this is fabulous. Now, I don't doubt for a moment that it's got a lot to do with tiredness, eh, too much partying, too much whiskey during the Fischiel event. Um, I, all of that would have had something to do with it. But I remember thinking to myself for the rest of the morning, what a weird thing to have happened. And I just kind of... I just kind of brushed past it and I fiddled with the camera a bit. I went straight into the Lefroy shop and we claimed our little dram, your rent that you can claim if you're a friend of Lefroy. Um, 
But I've thought about that since, and things similar to that have happened in whiskey environments to me since. And I know that I'm not the only one. I know that I'm not. I've seen people become moved by landscapes and vistas and environments and tastings and whiskey-focused things. I really have. So I reached out to the Patreon community and I said, look, if you've got any stories that you want to share and you don't mind it being read out online, share them with me. And I, I think that could make something of an interest in VPUB. It would mean me writing out passages and things from the community. But that's something that interests me. I don't know if it's just me being a bit silly and a bit sentimental, but it does. Richard Agnew uh, is saying, Aquaviti, can I identify with having kids later in life? Uh, yeah, I guess 38 for my first was a wee bit later. I've just about got the energy now. <laughs> Multi-mission saying I'm into that. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old daughter. I'm 40 now, and it's a game changer if ever there was one. Everything, mindset, perspective, feelings, you start to find that you're very, uh, you don't really matter anymore. <laughs> Everything has changed. There are there are things in the world that, that matter much more than you. Um yeah, I wonder if that's what it is. Jean Della Cuisine is saying these moments can hit you out of the blue sometimes. It was out of the blue. I wasn't feeling melancholy or sentimental or joyously happy. I was flat calm. Uh, but that taking that picture uh, um, and then standing there at, in, in the environment, in that place in Laphroaig, and that would have been the first time I'd been to Laphroaig. Um, I just, yeah, yeah. Richard Agnew is saying really understanding you tonight. Roy, totally identify. Thank you, Richard. That's very reassuring to read. And thank you, Jean, because uh, uh, another thing is, Jean, was it you that reached out about the, the giveaways? I'm not sure. I might need to come back to you on that. Um, I'll pick that up in a little while because Lee Kerwin has just bought me a dram saying you will be banished to a desert island and allowed to take one bottle priced at £50 or under. What would it be? Eric Waite, I think, did a, was it Eric that did a similar theme on a live stream? But I think it's a good topic um, because it does a few things. It shows people's tastes and opinions, gets a discussion about whiskey, it gets a, a discussion about value. £50 or under, I guess, would keep it very UK focused, but we could make it 50 euros, $50, whatever it was going to be, 50 currencies. Um, and, and say, I mean, it's. I think that's an easy one for me to answer right now. Coquerin 12, it would probably be. Um, I would be tempted to look also at things like a Deanston 12 and um, I would maybe maybe buy a couple of bottles of Scarabus or something like that to last me a bit longer. Um, but yes, there's a, there's value in that, that kind of subject because it's multi-layered. It doesn't just need to be about finding cheap whiskey. £50 and under. Lee Kerwin. Daniel Vermas is saying, not silly, just real and sincerely. Uh, Greg's Whiskey is saying, amazing story, Roy. My first moment like that, uh, not that emotional, though, was during my first trip to Scotland in 2002, Glenmorangie Distillery, and two nights at Cadball. Unforgettable. I think it's because you come to Scotland perhaps already invested in the place because of the whiskey relationship that you have. Uh, but when you realise that it's there and it's quite vibrant and very you feel quite connected to the land and things and the moodiness of the weather, the climate constantly challenging you and changing, um, the way the landscape can change from kind of fertile plains to hills quite quickly, um, to ocean, to, you know, rivers. And all of it is very conducive to making you feel small, I think. And, making you take stock of things. New Dram Drinker is in. Good to see you, Aunt, my friend. He's saying, we had our kids youngish, 26, so we have three kids all pretty much over 20 years old. I've been broke for years, <laughs> so that's why we only could afford a whiskey collection. I understand completely. And I think there's a lot of arguments that would, uh, that would suggest that you maybe did it the right way around. Um, 
Eric is saying, I was awestruck just with watching your dummies video series. I can't imagine being there. I think it, it would, it's would. it got a lot to do with the people that you're there with too. Maybe just going on your own. I can't, you can have those moments on your own, no doubt. But I think if you're there with people that are cherished and treasured and uh, people that you enjoy their company. I loved being there with Scott and Bart. Previous trips to, to Isla have always been, uh, most of the time I've been with friends. Uh, close friends, family, my brother and things. And it, so it's always had that kind of really nice depth. Eric is saying, I remember when I first had breakfast with Aquaviti, I got choked up. I learned later it was just the haggis taking revenge. Eric, you, I remember uh, you were emotionally moved. Um, I don't know if it's happened to you on both your trips here, but I remember your first trip, you, you'd admitted to me that you'd, that you'd struggled with emotions a couple of times. Um, so I, I know that I know that through speaking to people about whiskey in general and how it can affect you emotionally, uh, the environments, the stories, not just the liquid. Um, I know that I'm not alone. Whiskey Stream Five Tony is saying Culloden Moor and Glenfiddich eighteen. Wow. Now that that would be a uh, bit Culloden. I can imagine you reading the story about uh, the events that happened there in the past. Um, yeah, that would have a kind of spooky feel to it as well, a bit like uh, Glen Cole would. Whiskey Novice is saying, I'm asking the question in my live stream tomorrow night. If Scotch whiskey were taken out of the equation tomorrow, what would you turn to? Other whiskey, other spirits, sobriety? I dread to think. I absolutely dread to think. Um, but a good good topic, Jim. That's tomorrow night. Good luck with that. Good luck with the. Uh, uh, you can hang out uh, with Jim Whiskey Novice over on his channel tomorrow night. Whiskey Novice on YouTube. Luna is saying, I always get emotional about landscapes in Scotland and Ireland, even landscapes <laughs> shown on the telly, uh, quite close to water. Teary, that is, in a good sense. Fantastic, Luna. Have you never been here? You need to come over. Bring the missus, come over and see us. Yeah, Shane is saying, uh, Shane Lee is saying, is that an Irish name? I'm sorry if I'm not uh, pronouncing it right, Shane. He's saying, my wife always says going to Scotland is like going home. And since we are from Nova Scotia, it's understandable. New Scotland, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, a lot of people feel like that. I remember the Isla, the Magic of Isla video that I did. Uh, there's a girl in that um, uh, called Lindsay, and she's the last to be interviewed. And she said that the first time that she'd gone there, she'd never been there before in her life, but was always kind of struggling for a place, well, wherever she lived, struggling to feel that sense of home. And yet the moment that she arrived in Scotland, she felt it, she connected immediately. But that might be because she was already invested in the place and invested in whiskey beforehand. But it's not the first time I've heard that said. Uh, good to have you in, Shane. Good to welcome you here. Scott Allen is saying it's the magic of Isla that causes that emotion. It's happened to me in Speyside as well. It's happened to me in other places where I've just had to take a wee bit of time out um, and and uh, ah, just have a wee, a wee moment to be grateful, honestly. Thomas McCrory, you star. Welcome to the Aqua V Vitae Barflies. It's good to have you in again, Thomas. I hope you're keeping well. I hope Anna is keeping well too. Whiskey Novice is saying, uh, cheers buddy, you're very welcome Jim Gixer is saying, uh, Gixer Skipper, that's Luke up in the Highlands saying Getting into whiskey is the best thing I've ever done From the whiskey, the place, the bottle chasing, the community Whiskey on a whole is an emotional roller coaster I have to agree, Luke, it, it truly, truly is And I, I constantly say it, and I'll never tire of saying it It's a privilege, it's a privilege When I write about it I find myself able to write about things in a way, think about things and write about things in a way that I never ever have been able to write or think about anything. Um, and you can say that that's directly down to whiskey or it's a, a side effect of uh, whiskey's appeal, whatever, it, it, it works for me, it really does. Royale is saying, Jim's trying to bring you, bring you to tears <laughs> live on air. Um, I, I have to say the reason that I got um, this has been a kind of seed in my in my thoughts for a long time, but if you tuned in during the Douglas Lang uh, stream, or sorry the Fred Lang stream, it was Fred that came on from Douglas Lang. He came on to talk about the landscape of uh, independent bottlers, but he told that story and I held it together. I told that story. Um, 
about when he was talking about um he told the story about the, his dad and he was at a tasting and he was sipping a flight in this tasting up in Elgin and he got to a 24 year old Isla Peated Port Ellen and he smelled his dad and he and he relayed this story to us you need to go back and watch it because it just got me now I'm live on camera it was I was up there with with Fred as well I wasn't kind of off screen so I kind of just had to kind of take a breath and keep it together and I did I managed it fine and I've watched myself back at that moment and I, I pull it off perfectly my poker face is absolutely intact but every nerve in my scalp every nerve down at my back I was prickling because I could I recognized what was coming I knew it was going to come and I knew what he was going to talk about I knew that the story that was coming that it was going to be an emotional one and then when he got a wee bit unsettled and he got emotional telling the story I nearly lost it but it's wonderful that that he's able to if Fred if it's good enough for Fred Lang to admit that he shed a tear in front of a drama whiskey because of a connection because of a memory because of a story it's good enough for any of us that's what drove me to decide this. I think there's something in this. This could make a good um, topic to, for people to talk about that thing. Um, but it is a wee bit sentimental. Uh, Luna is saying, been to Scotland twice and Ireland has been home for a year when I was at uni. Of course you have, Luna. And I forgot how many times I've visited England. Well, I've not been able to hang out here with you, Luna. So that's what we need to fix. Multi-Agus Munshir, Matthew is in. Good, good to see you, Matthew. He's saying, even in folks, even in Aquaviti Roy, hope everyone is good and well. Here at home, everyone is well. Um, the things that we have wrong with us um, are minor little complaints like sore thumbs and sore teeth. and um, We're all doing very well. Thanks for asking, Matthew, and I hope you are too. Greg Swiskeri is saying, also as a previous cinema student, between other things, I have to say, in a non-whiskey lover point of view, um, I pass it to other people and they agree. It is a great documentary. Um, two of two. Okay. So you were speaking earlier. Just watching your documentary, especially Scotch Test Dummies, Nyla Part 2, made me emotional. Though never been there. That may be because I'm also a painter. Greg, all of the content, The Magic of Isla, uh, The Scotch Test Dummies Part 1, Scotch Test Dummies in Scotland Part 2, all of those were fully made with I had to try and find some way to kind of bring emotion in somehow and I'm not I'm not a filmmaker I don't really know how to do that effectively or subtly or creatively I just so I mean it's a bit kind of rough and ready but emotion and trying to convey that emotion in some way had to be part of it um, I'm glad that you connected with it like that and they see us saying it was uh, I see it as an experience a journey not just a drink uh, so the link to emotion makes sense. It really, really is. It's um, the friendships that I've been able to enjoy. I mentioned tonight uh, when I put this out on Twitter, there are no strangers in whiskey. That idea that a stranger is just a friend that you haven't got to know yet. Whiskey has allowed me to connect with more people than any human being has any right to ask for. And they're all wonderful people. I shared the story about what how I ended up on Isla for my 40th and the, there was a kind of dream involved in that and there was a kind of premonition and there was nonsense, there was a mashup like most dreams are. Um, but there are things that, that, that happened in that original dream and the original trip that's kind of come bizarrely true. The people in the community around whiskey seem to be a better... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not suggesting that it's unique to whiskey. I'm sure that that, it, that there are lots of realms out there where people are really positive and generous, and inclusive and kind and nice and nice to be around. But for for me, whiskey kills at that. Whiskey, the whiskey community is beyond what you can reasonably expect. I really believe that. Andrew Willis saying, absolutely, whis whiskey has much to do with our senses, which goes hand in hand with our memories and emotions. And Don't Pass Whiskey, Tim, good to see you. I know you're probably working tonight. That pub with Fred Lang was another pinnacle in the many you've had in the last year. Thank you, Tim. And I hope you don't work too hard tonight. I hope that you're, uh, Tim is just one of the many who's gone out to work frontline um, doing 
the best they can when probably they just want to hang out with us a wee bit longer. Let's raise a wee glass, actually, and just say thank you to the Sarahs over there in Texas. Thank you to the Tims over there at Donner Pass. <laughs> thank you to everybody. Thank you to my wife. Thank you to everyone who's gone out there and uh, putting themselves in environments that would probably not uh, otherwise choose to be in oftentimes. And uh, thank you for taking care of everything while the rest of us are simply asked to be patient on our couches. Slancha to you all. How about what accompanies well with whiskey? Men, food, uh, literature, music, and why? Another topic says sell it bang bottles that have uh, so much expectation that were just a disappointment. Yeah, that's not evangelizing though. I'm happy to talk about that subject, but I don't think I can lead with it. That would be hard for me to pull off. I, I kind of have to talk about the positive side, which is often, if you don't hear me talking about a brand, a whiskey, a something, a thing, if you don't hear me talking about it, there's a chance that I, I have considered and I don't want to talk about it because there's I'm struggling to find positivity in it. James Burgoyne is saying, I should have asked you about your thumb. Hope it's okay. Did that bring tears to your eyes? It bloody did, James, I have to say. So it happened and I knew it was bad because it just went right in and you can feel it and there's that hot, sharp shock of, it's not pain. It's it's just there has been a, there is a jarring stab of electricity. You know, there's something bad and I just grabbed my thumb and I didn't want to look at it. I knew it was bad. Um, and I looked at the metal thing that it happened on and I just ran upstairs and I'm, and I'm hanging over the, the sink because I could feel that the blood is filling in my hand. <laughs> and my wife comes into the bathroom. She said, you all right? What's happened? What's happened? What's happened? I said, I don't know. I haven't looked at it yet. <laughs> and I opened up my hand to kind of see this, this line. Where it was gross. It was ugly. But it's fine. The stick and plaster is holding it in place. And I just... I have to just be patient. The only reason the plaster is on there because I don't want anything else catching it. Thanks for asking, James. Uh, Radic is saying, uh, add Aquavite Barflies page and find me there. I think Dave Cummins might already be in the Barflies page. Uh, Dave, if you're if active on Facebook, uh, Aquavite Barflies, um, and you just apply to join and well, me or one of the admins approves your your you're joining. Jimmy Legg is saying, uh, that's not evangelizing though. <laughs> you're my exact opposite. Thank God you're alive to balance me out. <laughs> I can be as, cynic as, a, as, as cynical as the next guy. I can be as pessimistic, as grumpy, as huffy. But this space, I enjoy exactly what you enjoy perhaps, Jimmy, that it doesn't need to be like that all the time. Everyone is saying, I'm trying to learn the difference uh, that European versus American oak brings to the taste. Any suggestion on which two whiskies I could use to compare and contrast together? Um, you know what? Unless you go the single cask route and you know, um, but I don't have it here, but I recently enjoyed an uh, independent bottling of a Mortlach made from two X sherry hogsheads. So you know it's American oak. Um, and, and it was wonderful because the, the, the deep, heavy notes of Mortlac were, were all intact. It was all there. Um, and if you ever catch yourself sipping that and thinking that it's sweet and, and delicate for a Mortlac, just sip it in contrast with something else. And the Mortlac, the deep bass notes of the Mortlac come through strong, the savouriness, um, the weight of it is there. But that sweet caramel um, and bright, sweet fruit of the American oak, to my um, interpretation of it, was there as well. And I have to say, when it comes to sherry cask, I love a good European oak sherry cask with the, with the spice and the tannic and the dry development there that can happen. Uh, the things that people love about European oak, I do love it. But my soft spot, if I was to choose, I think it would be a, where I am just now in whiskey <laughs> and I reserve the right fully to change my mind tomorrow. Um, is, is American Oak. Absolutely. What time are we doing? It's 5 to 11 already, my goodness. Uh, I'm able just to talk, right? Simon Ray saying, I remember enjoying a Macallan 18 with my wife in 2005 on the final Saturday of our honeymoon at One Devonshire Gardens in Glasgow and thinking life couldn't get much better. I've had some lovely times at One Devonshire as well. In fact, that was where Eric Waite stayed. 
Eric has shed a tear at One Devonshire Gardens as well, and it was on a live stream with me. He became emotional when he was just trying to, uh, he was trying to verbalise what he was experiencing. And he was jet lagged, he was tired, he'd been running about crazy, he'd been doing different things, he'd been looking at things and he was experiencing all of this new new things. And he, and Eric will quite often admit uh, that, that he, he doesn't mind uh, letting his emotions run a little bit and he, and he became emotional and I had to hold it together and I was getting emotional as well and we weren't even in the same room we were over a video live stream together my wife is still in are you listening to this tonight Lynn? good thing Lynn is medically skilled and knows her ways around hair cutting tools I don't think there's much experience Lynn brought from medicine into cutting my hair if I'm entirely honest um, Donna Pass is saying the silver lining in all of this is I'm opening up the bottles collected in the last two years so many people are doing that it's actually one of the things I was thinking about as a topic is this opening bottles thing that's happening now people are at home and they're looking at their collections and going ah let's just open it and I think what's happening in everyone's life right now is that we're all being forced to focus on what's important and I think mortality is one of those things and why would we want to leave all these wonderful experiences sitting on the shelf or in a cabinet somewhere, these bottles that are placed in our lives purely to make us know what it is to be alive for no other reason? Um, there's a lot of bottle opening going on right now, I have to say, Tim, and you should enjoy it. Pete Head is saying, trying again after being thrown out of the chat. Theme suggestion, or oh, did you lose connection? Um, do a VPUB on whiskey and food and invite a chef to talk about comparing tastes and flavours that could work um, I need a good chef somebody that could do that Craig Dollar is saying good evening even Barflies I'm a little late to the show just poured a Cragmore 12 it's a wee bit light and fluffy I don't care what you're drinking my friend it's good to welcome you in here and I can't wait for you and I to get together over a big spicy plate of Indian food soon looks like it's going to be a long way away though Craig I hope you enjoy that Craig and more in the meantime Lee J Brown is in St Evening Roy good, good evening Lee J and welcome Ben Demon Hunter is saying hey, found Aquavitae's very first recycling video tossed uh, away Ugedal uh, unimpressed I was impressed but Ugedal used to be much better than it is now. Ugedal used to be a, an absolute cracker of a whiskey, and that was maybe my second or third Ugedal that I threw away in my first recycled review. Um, and I know that we change and our palate changes over our whiskey journey, but I'm pretty convinced that there was a huge difference um, from the first Ugedal I tried. Eric Evans is saying, have you got to the straight to see the Cod of Reckon? I've seen it in videos and it's breathtaking. I have not seen Cod of Reckon. Cod of Reckon is a whirlpool, of course, and I haven't seen it, but you can take a boat trip. They will take you out there on a boat to see it. And Eric Waite is saying, Aquavita, I've never cried. Nope, never happened. <laughs> Molasses is saying, my love for Deanston probably comes from the fact that their distillery was my first stop after driving on the left for the first time. Um, that first Deanston dram washed away the tension sweetly. Good for you. Now, come Sevy's in. I have apologies. Fell asleep. I do it all the time, Sevy. Kids just woke up. We'll be on properly once they're settled. Hope everyone is well and enjoying some drams. Nice do, Aquavitae, Lynn Duff. <laughs> didn't go for the number one guard. No, we didn't. In fact, I made sure that it wasn't even available to her. I'm trying to click on the camera so I can have a look at myself here. Uh, 246 of you and thank you all so much for your support it's fine you, you don't get the the opportunity to look too closely at it there is a quiz tonight obviously even on these kind of laid-back sessions on a sunday evening i'll still bring a quiz at the end uh, i'm going to make sure that i clip it and we we're well within our two hours tonight um and the quiz is easy tonight every sunday and thursday v pub will all uh, always have a quiz to go out on and I used the rest of the Scog Smart questions that he'd sent across to me. Anybody that's got 10 out of 10 I'm going to keep a, start keeping a list of the people that score 10 out of 10 um, and anybody that scores 10 out of 10 have the ability, if they so wish, to contribute some questions for consideration for use in the VPUB. Uh, Scog Smart did a fantastic job and put together a bunch of questions 
um, that I'm using a lot of, in fact, maybe maybe them all. And Menno has sent me questions in the past and Doc McAllen Fine has sent me questions in the past. But what I'm going to start to do now is anybody that does send these questions and I'm going to start to curate them and keep them all so I can dip into them. And it makes it much easier for me, of course, preparing for these live streams and things to put it together. Jimmy Legg is saying, shut up, aquivated for something. <laughs> He's obviously having a huff about me saying that the quiz is easy tonight. John Della Cuisine is already suggesting there's going to be a lot of banana skins, as is Steve Anderson as well. Steve, thanks for being in tonight. Um, and thanks for looking after me again, along with Whiskey Jason, McAllen Fine and Rear, uh, Alistair Gray, uh, uh, I don't know who else. Uh, lots of you are super helpful in moderating the chat and helping me pick things up when I'm missing it as well. Remaster is saying, I know what you mean, tried an Oogie uh, FR. Uh, I, I mean, it's, I have to say, it's still a good drama. It's not expensive. It's 54% ABV. It's up there with, uh, in terms of experience, but you'd might even, a lot of people might even pitch it a bit higher than the Lagavulin 16s of the world and things like that. And it's kind of, in the UK at least, it's around about the similar price point. It's 60 quidish, I think, for Oogadal. Um, and considering the presentation, the higher ABV, yes, it's mostly young spirit that's in there, but it's Isla, it's our beg. It's, we want it young and peaty and powerful and bold. You know, most of us do anyway. And I just think that what my problem with it is not that it's bad, and I, that's what I don't want to confuse there, but when they when that Ugadal first came out, when it first hit the market, it was really quite remarkable. And I think maybe they, they were able to put it together perhaps with older stock, that's the suspicion. Tabitha saying, if Roy says a quiz is easy, it usually ends up being flipping hard. I try and mix it up. I try and mix it up. Pete Head is saying, I keep up that thought. Zelan is saying, you always say it's easy. Yes. Let's have a wee look. There are a couple of things I want to mention. Uh, I mentioned the clubs. Um, I, I do want to uh, mention the virtual whiskey festival was such a, a huge success. There was a report went out after it. It was very, it was a very good report, very concise, very in-depth, and it was shared with everybody that was involved. And it kind of showed the stats, but it didn't give the stats any context. That virtual whiskey festival thing that went out uh, Saturday of last week, that was up close to 900 live viewers in, in, in its peak. That's about three times bigger than anything else that goes on in whiskey live streams. I know the Whiskey Tribe over in the States, they can have huge. Uh, Steve Anderson will probably be able to tell me the size of the live streams that the guys are able to do over in Texas. Um, and I've seen hundreds of people in, in those. But that was the first that that event, um, had, the, the first time that event had been shared. It was done on a very small channel. But such was the appetite for it that it was very successful. So, of course, they're trying to figure out ways to bring it again. And they've penciled in the 9th of May. Uh, which is another weekend, Saturday the 9th of May, um, and they have invited me back to host it again. And I've said, absolutely, we just simply need to talk about uh, the fees. That was a big shift. That was a lot. And uh, I, I, don't, I didn't get paid anything. I was very happy to host. I was very happy to help out. Um, but if that's going to become a regular thing, um, I think I was the only guy involved <laughs> in setting all of that up and hosting it and doing all of that that didn't get paid. Everybody else would have been paid. And if I, I tell me if I'm out of order thinking along those lines, um, but I would be happy. I would like to keep hosting that. I would like to be involved. I would like to be representing the community and asking questions that probably the community are going to want to ask of these brands. I think it's only fair. Roy Alice saying the Virtual Whiskey Festival was a triumph. I came away with a very positive feeling after it. Honestly, I did. Um, Dorpas is saying he's never had an older Ugudal, but the current one is pretty good. A fantastic thing to blend. One third Ugudal, two thirds been a having. Twelve is fin a fantastic Isla blend. Do you know what? I bet you it is, Tim. I bet you it is. Willie Dollar is saying, easy quiz you say, with a big grin on your face. Yes, you can all smell a wee rat. So the Virtual Whiskey Festival, pencil in Saturday the 9th of May. I think we're all going to be in some form of lockdown still, even out in May. It's unfortunate to consider. But I've kind of suggested that they shouldn't be calling it the Lockdown Festival going forward. If it's going to be a regular thing, they kind of don't want that negative connotation with it. They want it to be a much more 
keep along the lines of collaboration, keep reaching out to the brands that are that are going to fit with the audience, that are going to fit preaching to the, the community, that just do more of what they already did, I think, is the thing, but maybe find another name for it. Uh, Peter Box is saying, I think you should get some liquid payment. Oh, that's a good idea, Peter. But I am saturated with liquid right now. It's kind of funny when I get an email from somebody promising me free stuff. Uh, I, sometimes it, it takes a lot for the energy to go back and just kind of say, look, uh, I don't want to end up down that rabbit hole tonight. Pete, uh, Pete Head is saying, being paid after you've been asked and put a lot of effort in is only fair. Uh, you should get equal fees. I agree with you, says Billy Saunders. Good to have you in, Billy. And I'm glad that you agree with me as well. And if everyone else is getting paid, it's more than reasonable that you're getting paid and compensated. And the thing is, is that I get, you, my community, my patrons finance the whole Aquavitae channel now. It means it puts me in a wonderfully luxurious position of being independent and doing exactly what I want to do. Exactly what I would make the content and share the opinions that I would want to watch and listen to if I was tuning in, if I was viewing it, and be beholden to no one, only the community. So that's why it kind of works that for me, that's why I didn't want it to be on my channel. I didn't want the Virtual Whiskey Festival to be in my channel. It was going to be a very brand driven thing. And that's wonderful. And there's a definitely a place for that, but it wasn't in the Aquavitae channel. Um, so yeah, if, if I go over there and they're contracting me in and at the end of April, I don't have a contract anymore. I'm out of contract with my employer of 21 years. Um, I'll be working piecemeal. I'll be asked, actively looking for ways to to keep the lights on. So they say, Gregor say no one on Whiskey Tube is as perfectly placed, mannered, honest and educated enough to fulfill the role as host. Gregor, I'm I pay you to say this, don't I? Just be honest, you absolutely need to be recompensed. Thank you so much, Greg, and thank you for the kind words and bringing out the blushes. Seriously, Aquavitae festivals are profit-driven enterprises, so it would be inappropriate to be compensated. That you know, I have to say, in the defense of that festival, and I'm kind of trying to fight against this now, in the defense of them, do you know why they didn't want to release the dram list in advance? They didn't want it to come off uh, because they knew that if they re released the dram list early and publicised it everywhere, that people would be going off and buying the whiskies to drink along. But they didn't want that to be the thing. They wanted it to be very community focused. They wanted it to be as community focused as possible. And they didn't want to be seen to trying to sell lots and lots of bottles. I, I have suggested that's very nice of you. That's good. But you need to find a way for the people that are driven to want to enjoy the drams that are being enjoyed on the day, you need to give them the option. They'll take they'll take care of their own decisions about how much money they want to spend on what. You need to tell them in advance, and maybe they can buy it by, you know, cheaper by the dram, drinks by the dram, a eh, perfect measure. Any any of these, the dram team, any of these dram services could get involved in order to do the fulfillment. They don't need to buy the full bottles. Some of the bottles that were getting shared perhaps weren't even available in all markets anyway. Um, so I said to them, no, no, you need you need to share in advance what you're uh, what you're going to be bringing at the festivals. I think it's a, something you need to do, and don't worry about the fact that you're. It's okay. People know that you're a brand, and that all of this promotional activity that you're doing is in order to build your brand and continue to sell product. Neil Cochran is saying, thank you. Gave the lockdown festival credibility as well as bringing a sizable number of us along to it. Thank you, Neil. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Um, for to hear from you, my friend. Thank you. Gexer Skipper is saying the amount of bottles that must have been bought that day is only fair to pay you. Somebody just bought me a virtual dram, the Sis Admin. Now that's an interesting username. Um, has just bought me a dram saying, first time in the VPUB Live. Love your channel. What's your thoughts on Brook Laddie? Uh, I on the day of the the tour of Isla, I opened a Brook Laddie beer barley. And I'm struggling to reach past it just now. It's very unique whiskey. There is something in it. There's a kind of creamy maltiness in it that it's almost, uh, we call it Maltesers in the UK. I think in America you call it uh, chocolate malt balls or something. But th there's a maltiness in that, that Brook Laddie that is, uh, but that's a different Brook Laddie, the beer barley. Generally, I think it's quite good. I love the fact that most of the presentation is out at 50% ABV and the value is pretty good across the range. I do find the range a wee bit difficult to keep up with at times, but that's me being picky. 
Um, I know why there are so many Brook Laddie fans out there because they bring a lot of great product and it's one of the best tours on Isla as well, especially the warehouse tour. Slanch assists admin and thank you for your virtual dram. Okay, everyone is saying that's an idea. Need to partner with somebody like Drinks by the Dram. Special set, virtual fit. Just needs time to, in order to affect that. And right now when bottling plants are closed, packaging plants are closed, uh, offices and distribution and uh, uh, lots of things are, are uh, people will find the whiskey work on it it doesn't need to be get it right first time just keep developing it keep getting the industry mindset modified to the concept that they don't need to be so uptight and brand protective if you're a brand that's protecting yourself and you don't want to collaborate with other brands that immediately tells me that there's something there that you are overly protective about. And it tells me that you are not pointed to us, to this community. You're perhaps volume sales driven, perhaps bottom, low, low, lower shelf, price point driven, or the opposite end of the spectrum, you're luxury goods driven, you're something like that. You're not bringing good quality, the best the best of stuff that you can make at the best price point in order to engage um, and enthuse uh, the drinker or the taster or the enthusiast or, or the geek, honestly. Um, so if you're not collaborative, that probably starts to raise alarm bells at the outset. So I would imagine that you're going to struggle to get the Diageos around the table, Pernod Ricards, William Grants, Edrington, White and Mackay. You're going to struggle to get those this is just me speaking. This is Aquaviti. I don't know what I'm talking about, but this is my opinion. You're going to struggle to get them round. But all the independent guys and the smaller producers like Angus Dundee, like, like uh, Janie Mitchell that were involved, uh, like Distel, who were not involved, but should have been, honestly, Deanston, Tober, Mori, Lechik, uh, Buna Haven, would have loved to have seen them involved in that thing, as I would have liked to have seen Glenn Goyne and Tam Du from Ian McLeod. If, the, if these brands start to realise that the, the community that they would be preaching to are exactly the same people that they're setting up their products for. And, and if you're going for luxury goods, if you're going in some other sector, it's not going to work for you. That format, that festival, that environment isn't going to work for you. That's okay. But collaboration is key. Gino is in as well saying, I, uh, from Graham Young, Aquaviti, I would think that you could be the perfect Campbelltown whiskey ambassador hint hint i have no desire and i'll go on record saying this i have no desire to be a brand ambassador those guys work very 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 hard they are constantly traveling i get to do this i'll be my own boss control over my own destiny from my own four walls this is the perfect scenario for me and i don't want to change that stop chatting roy get on with the quiz try and keep it under two hours tonight have you discussed everything I think I more or less have. I hope I have. There's only one thing that I want to talk about, and I'll talk about it once I've spoken to the people, because uh, there's people that are getting in touch with me that have got nice whiskies, older whiskies, uh, run-out whiskies, discontinued whiskies that they want to share with the community. They've got some surplus and they're working. They want to work with me in order to share it with people who otherwise wouldn't get their hands on it, and I think it's a good and generous idea. Just need to work out how it can be done. If you get any ideas, you can feed back to me. Use the Aquavite Barflies page for that kind of thing. That page was set up in order to can get people together in real life. I know that's difficult right now, but the page is still growing and building. And that community, once it's set free and we're able to arrange events again, it's just going to explode and it's going to be great fun. It's going to be a lot of pent-up demand for it. Uh, Ross Fudd is in saying they're only interested in the bottom line and keep it in the black. Any business has to look at that. Obviously, that's the the reason to exist but some people do get let's say cynical eric evanson saying the dummies managed to get dalmore on a live stream that's right and for a very good cause as well um i i it would have been lovely especially with that cause if uh dalmore could have got on involved on a live stream with uh, i appreciate they've got a whole lineup to share and it was going to take a whole but you don't need to share your whole lineup um share less and maybe collaborate a bit more I'm just a suggestion <laughs> uh, I didn't you wouldn't criticize any of what happened on that event because that was a fundraising event and Scott and Bart managed to get together with an organization in Dalmore and raise over three thousand dollars for uh for American nurses nothing to talk about 
fantastic stuff. Greg's whiskey guy saying, you're right, Roy. For instance, there is a French distiller who refuses bloggers to talk about their whiskey. They're still working uh, with a decades-old marketing mindset when they used to be able to control every sentence through print. Those days are gone. They need to realign. They can only speak to their existing fan base. It, it's... I, I have a, the the luck and the good fortune to work for a super, super forward-thinking CEO for the last 20 years who just thinks about things in a very, very different way. Um, uh, yeah. Yep, there are some very, very old traditional mindsets still out there. Unfortunately, they exist in whiskey. Let's go on with this quiz. See if I can make this work. I wish you all the best, Donor Pass is saying, I'm sure many distilleries would want to have you as an independent contractor consultant for your own time as you are available, as you have a finger on the pulse of the people. Well, I, for a lot of producers out there, <clears throat> I'm very much part of their audience, um, their potential customer base. Um, I'm part of this community, the same as all of you guys. Daniel Vermas is saying, easy quiz. Zach Andrews is saying the best voice for a brand is the people who buy it. Worry less about how to evangelize, concentrate more on making a good product, and the evangelism will automatically take care of itself, honestly. Good luck, everybody. Another uh, Sunday night, a multiple choice quiz. You're only playing against yourself, of course. You keep your own scores. Please, no Googling. You can follow the crowd if you like, but there's a concept in these quizzes called banana skins. And that can often happen. You follow the crowd and uh, you get caught out by a banana skin. Try and apply your own knowledge, your own rational thinking and see how you get on. Uh, you don't need to share your score with anyone, only yourself. You can share it in the chat if you like. Good luck, everybody. Greg is saying, Bruce Bonus Roy, now you have a mullet. Your appeal in Germany has increased tenfold. Let's raise a glass to mullets and... Uh, uh, marketing power that they wield. <laughs> Cheers, Gregor. <clears throat> you know it's going to be shaved in the next live stream. Uh, Espen has just bought me a dram said, I want to toast all hospital staff plus my wife who works tonight. Absolutely. Um, I did mention it earlier, Espen, as I've said on previous live streams, I don't think you can toast that enough. Here's to your wife and here's to everybody in the front line. Here's to everybody that's out there working in order to keep everything functioning. Slancha, you're all heroes. Okay, let's get up this quiz here. Question one, <clears throat> the number one selling Single malt brand in the US is what? What's the number one brand in the US? Look at that awesome little emoji being used for that reason. Fantastic. I'll do the same myself. So in order to try, we'll try and keep it fast tonight. So in order to try and fox the Googlers, best-selling single malt in the US is A, Glenfiddich, B, Glenmorangie, or C, Glenlivet. One of the three Glens. Now we know what the global bestseller is. We know what the UK bestseller is. But I want to ask, what is the US bestseller? A, Glenfiddich, B, Glenmorangie, C, Glenlivet. Now, there's two of those brands there that are always top two globally. And they trade, uh, they've only traded places once back in 2014. One of them beat the other. And the rest of the time, it's been uniformly the other one. Uh, but there is another player in there, another Glen, a third Glen. Lots of people, uh, oh, there is some divided opinion. I can tell you that the best-selling Glen in the US is Glen Livet. The best-selling globally is Glen Fiddick. Uh, Glen Livet took the best-selling malt in 2014, but it only happened once. About 14, 15 million cases to Glen Fiddick, 16, 17 million cases. Glen Morangy is the best-selling single malt uh, in Scotland. In the UK, I think it's still Glenfiddich, um, but in the US, Glenfiddich, uh, sorry, Glenlivet. 
Graham Fraser is happy. He's got one out of one already. Jimmy Legg is screaming shenanigans. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. Question two, and this is a Scogsmads question. You can tell by the little icon down the bottom left. What does McMira smoke their whiskey with in addition to Pete? I don't actually know if Scogsmard is in tonight. I uh, hope he picks it up in the replay and uh, I thank you for your uh, questions and contribution, my friend. A, Applewood. B, Juniper Twigs. C, Beach Chips. McMira smokes the whiskey with, in addition to Pete. Now, there, it may be, I wasn't able to kind of fully research this. It may be that they have used uh, two or more, maybe two or three of, of maybe all of everything I'm offering here, but it's what they're known for, what they're primarily known for, that they actually have a marketing and communication out there that talks about this practice as well as Pete. And I can tell everybody, that as well as Pete, McMira use juniper twigs. Now, what's interesting is uh, there's a great story about tomato actually in juniper, um, that uh, tomato and garlic is actually something to do with juniper, I'm sure. Uh, or they have a connection with juniper because of all the illicit stills there. They used to use the juniper um, as fuel. And the reason that they used juniper twigs is because it was virtually smokeless compared to the other woods that were, were available. So it's interesting that juniper twigs are used by McMira. But interesting to know the science behind it. Question three, what is notable about Oban and Royal Loch Nagaram? Obviously speaking about two Diageo distilleries here, but what's notable about these two? Is it that they both have enjoyed royal warrants? Is it that they are Diageo's smallest malt distilleries? Or is it that they are Diageo's oldest malt distilleries? What is notable about Oban and Royal Loch Nagar? They both had royal warrants, smallest Diageo distilleries, or the oldest Diageo distilleries. <laughs> awesome. Still over 200 of you in participating in the quiz. Thank you so much for your support. I hope you're having a relaxed Sunday evening. I certainly have. I hope that it doesn't come off that I've had too relaxed a time. Everybody's guessing, but the vast majority seem to be thinking that it is B, Diageo's smallest distilleries, and I have to say that's absolutely spot on. Royal Loch Nagar's capacity is about half a million litres. Oban's not much bigger, and it's very limited because they're hemmed in by the town and the buildings around them. Around about 800,000 litres, and the two those two distilleries are Diageo's smallest. Question four, and another Scogsmad question. Which of these distilleries was the last to be founded? Was it A, Bunahaven, B, Longmorn, or C, Craig Elihy? So three Victorian-era distilleries. All three of these distilleries founded in the late 19th century. Uh, but I want to know which is the most recent, which is the youngest? A, Bunahaven, B, Longmorn, or C, Craig Elihy? Lots of guessing here. Hmm. Maybe, a Maybe it's not a banana skin. You seem to be doing okay. I can tell you that uh, Bunahaven was 1881, Craig Elihy was 1891, and Longmorn was 1894. So the most recent, um, for those of you who decide that this is an asshat question, eh, I am immune. <laughs> this is a scog smart question, it's not mine. Um, but it was B, Longmorn is the youngest of those distilleries. 1881 for Bunahaven, that comes up quite a lot, the same founding year as Brook Laddie. Um, Craig Elihy, I actually thought Craig Elihy was older than that. I thought it was early 19th century. Um, but I knew that Longmorn was around that time. And I believe that it was uh, a gentleman by the name of Duff who founded Longmorn. Easy quiz, you say, mm, says Stevie. 
I did say it with a slight, uh, a slight grin on my face. Not all the questions are mine tonight, though, Steve. Here we have a picture of Craig Elliche Bridge. This is Telford's Craig Elliche Bridge, just after speaking about Craig Elliche there. Um, but what I want to know, this fantastic bridge and this must-see site, if you're ever up in uh, the region of Speyside, is I want to ask, what river does it bridge? Is it across the River Spey? Is it across the River Livet? Or is it across the River Fiddick? Telford's Craigellachie Bridge, what river does it cross? Jimmy Legg is asking if all duffs are gentlemen. Well, I recently found out that a Scott Monroe's wife, uh, her surname is Duff as well. It's a very, very recent thing to discover. I probably knew it one day in the past, but failed to retain <laughs> the nugget of information. Okay, everybody seems to be, or the vast majority, think it's the River Spey that Craigellachie Br Bridge crosses. Vicky Thompson is saying B. Anybody going for a C? Pete Head is saying C. So some guessing going on, no doubt at all, but I can tell you that Craigellachie Bridge absolutely crosses the River Spey. The River Spey. Just down from uh, McAllen Distillery, from Craigellachie Distillery. Down from the Highlander Inn, the Craigellachy Hotel. The River Spey. Marcus Kreitner is already celebrating a five out of five, a pass mark at this point, you star. Well done. Well done. And thank you to my admins for helping to catch these questions, that, uh, sorry, these answers that some of them are getting um, held back. Question six. Now, I don't know how to pronounce this. I apologise. I'm just going to say St. Pally uh, Distillery has released a blended malts called Harmony and Heritage. Where is it located? Now, I apologise for my pronunciation here. Somebody's going to correct me, but... Oh, no. There's a freebie for you. My wife's machine is a wee bit long in the tooth, and sometimes it needs a bit of an extra nudge, and I think I just nudged it a wee bit too far. But go for it. Let's see if anybody gets this wrong now. <laughs> Billy Saunders thinks it was C. <laughs> you guys are awesome. So there you go. Giving you a little bit of a hand by mistake. Or let's see the, the slight lag in my wife's laptop that's running this quiz. Um, gave you a bit of a hand there. But St. Palais Distillery has released blended malts called, I guess the pronunciation would be Harmony and Heritage. Heritage? You all know how terrible my French pronunciation pronunciation is. And absolutely, it's C, it's uh, France. So a bit of a freebie there. Kilted Moose Scott is saying Merci, Aquavite. <laughs> Fantastic, really. Scogsmard, uh, a question number seven. Which town serves as the administrative capital of Isla? Is it A, Port Ellen, B, Port Nahaven, or C, Bamore? The administrative capital of Isla. I don't want to say anything. My own theoretical score on tonight's quiz would have been a seven. The other three I would have been guessing at. I'm pretty sure that I would have got seven of these right. But the pass mark is five, as long as you get past the 50%, and as long as you've had a bit of fun and maybe some uh, curious little things come up that makes you want to go and work it out. Um, I would say that most of you are absolutely spot on that the administrative capital of Isla a lot of you would have think, perhaps think this is a banana skin, but it's not. It is also the biggest town of Bamor. Bamor is the administrative capital. What they actually do there to make it so, I'm not very sure. Um, but yes, thanks to Scogsmart for another question as we go into question eight and ask, what does Glenn Farkless mean when translated? Interesting one, this. I knew this one. What does Glenn Farkless mean? Does it mean A, Valley of the Green Grass? 
B. Valley of the Grey Geese or C. Valley of the Grey Green Place. Now, I noticed uh, Daniel Vermas when I was uh, setting up tonight that suggested that a good hint doing the quiz would be to look at Roy's face, perhaps suggesting that I don't have much of a poker face, that I may be giving some things away and that's pre perhaps got something to do with his success in the quiz recently. So I've been, I've tried to be aware of it tonight. Glen Farkless means Valley of Green Grass, Valley of the Grey Geese, Valley of the Grey Green Place. And I can see just how knowledgeable you all are. Class at the end of Glen Farkless is the exact same as Glasgow. And Glasgow is Green Place. So the answer we're looking for is Valley of the Green Grass. So if you said A, give yourself a point. And we'll roll into the second from last question and see which of the following is a Scotch whiskey. A, Old Crow. B, Old Overholt, or C, Old Smuggler. Good scores tonight. It's not a difficult quiz. Come on. It's not a difficult. Russell Whiskey has got three out of eight, and I found a cool way to share it. How did you do that, Russell? How did you do that? And are you the Russell that's just come on and started and supported me on Patreon as well? I think it is now that I look at your image there. Thank you so much, Russell. Thank you for your recent support, my friend. Which of the following is a Scotch whiskey? A, Old Crow, B, Old Overholt, or C, Old Smuggler? Pretty much everybody has got that. Um, Jimmy Legge is saying A is a whiskey, Old Crow. Um, old Crow is a whiskey, Old Overholt is a... I believe it to be a bourbon, Old Overhaul, a cheaper bourbon. And C, Old Smuggler, is Scotch whisky. Uh, Multimission is saying C, surely you're being kind of kind, Aquaviti. Old Smuggler. Last question. Um, there's a lag happening again. Uh, let's see how we're getting on. Mark Slinger's on 9 out of 9. Anybody else? Mark, that's a fantastic score. Neil Cochran on 9 out of 9. There's going to be 10 out of 10s tonight. Uh, let's have a look at question 10, 9 out of 9 for Nick Keane as well. Superb, Nick. Which of these distilleries were actually two distilleries of the same name operating side by side from 1972 until 1985? So they built a brand new distillery alongside. They ran the two of them side by side from 1992 to 1972 sorry, to 1985. Was it A, Kalila on Isla, B, Glendullen in Speyside, or C, Klein Leash in the Northern Highlands? Daniel. Did I give away the answer? <laughs> Did my poker face let me down? So from 1972 to 1985, we had two completely separate isolated distilleries producing at the same time, under the same name, in between those years. tell you that it's Glendallen in Dufton. Now I know you're thinking about Klein Leash and Brora and in the late 60s there was a new facility built and they mothballed the old uh, Klein Leash. So Klein Leash and Klein Leash did operate side by side when they came back on stream in the early 70s before it was switched to the name Brora. But that was running from uh, Brora I think and Klein Leash would have been running together from the late 60s through to about uh, 1983, when Brora was finally closed. Uh, but Glendullen was 72 till 85. And both of them were operating always as Glendullen and Dufton, and there was no other brands or branding involved. Um, I think that was a fantastic question. I can't remember who gave it to me, but it's a good one, and it's an absolute banana skin for question 10. There's going to be a lot of you feeling a wee bit upset, like Neil Cochran, oh no, fell at the last fence. <laughs> Let's see, Peter Eichen, superb, Peter, 8 out of 10. Um, and Peter, thank you so much for your recent generosity. Um, I hope I've replied to your message. I feel like I have. Hellswood, Helen is 8 out of 10 as well. I'm looking for the other ones. Mark Slinger is saying bugger, banana skin at the end, 9 out of 10. Uh, looking, 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 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10. That's the grey, 7. Daniel Vermas, 9 out of 10 tonight. Almost there, Daniel. Uh, still a great score. Uh, Jimmy Legg, 7 out of 10. Gabriel Welding, 8. Marcus Kreitner, 9. Orange Wheel, 7. Lots of people complaining about banana skins. I'm looking to see, is there a 10 out of 10? 
Mark Slinger is not he didn't manage. Nine out of ten, Graham Fraser. Very happy with that. Thank you, Graham. Nick Keen is saying nine out of ten, easily my best score. Thank you, Nick. Wasn't that tough a quiz, perhaps? But you only know it if you know it. We always talk about that. Erwin, nine out of ten as well. Good to have you in Erwin. I think that's a new name. Great score as well, nine out of ten. Fabulous. Chris Banks Wildlife. Good to see you, Chris. Nine out of ten. Too slow. It's saying easy. Wonder what you scored too slow. Wonder what you scored tonight, my friend. Uh, perhaps you shared earlier on. Six out of ten. Pass mark. No problem at all. Fabulous stuff. <laughs> Seven out of eight, depending on whether your banana skin alert counts. Aquaviti. <laughs> They were not actually side by side. There's a distance between them, Aquaviti. Okay, yes. They are both Glendullen and they're both operating side by side as Glendullen. And yes, they're mate. They are both on uh, in separate buildings, separate constructs. Yeah, there's old Glendullen and new Glendullen. And the old Glendullen was eventually mothballed in 1985. And the Glendullen that produces today for Singleton is still operational, but constructed in 1972. That's what I'm after. Uh, Matthew, I wonder if you were able to get that correct. I wonder if you got it right. No, no tens on an easy quiz. Ros Fudd is in a huff. No tens tonight. Eric Evanson is saying, you ever have anything from Glendullen, Roy? Uh, yes, I've had a couple of uh, indies, Glendullen uh, indies. Uh, most Glendullen goes out as Singleton of Glendullen, and depending on where you are in the world, yeah, your Singleton might be from Glenord, it might be from uh, Singleton of Dufton. Uh, but the two Dufton distilleries that contribute to the Singleton brand is Dufton and Glendullen. Um, and the Singleton range is meant to compete with the basic Glenlivets, the Glenfiddichs, that kind of product. So it's a wee bit bland, honestly, but it's nice and solid and good quality. Uh, better that you try and find an indie or a special release where the ABV is a wee bit higher. And uh, they do put out a decent product, I have to say. Marcus Kreitner is saying, admit it, you didn't want any 10 out of 10 today, putting in such a banana skin at the end. I don't always put a banana skin at the end. Um, but I knew that that was going to be the banana skin question, and I did purposely put it at the, ten, at the end, Marcus. Uh, but I didn't do it. I was fully expecting that somebody would get a 10 out of 10 tonight. And remember, I'm going to keep, I'm going to uh, curate a list of the people who are getting 10 out of 10, because there might be some fun to be had with that at some point in the future. Um, and I like people getting 10 out of 10, because there's more people then to contribute questions and help me uh, with uh, the quizzes in the future. Let's, uh, I should be get out of the, the, the picture. And I gave you a freebie tonight as well, or a, or a slight mistake gave you a freebie as well. Fair Winds Roy says, uh, Everwind, was nice spending time with you in a bar flies this evening. Slash it all. Thank you to you, Everwind. Thank you to everybody for hanging out with me for a relaxed Sunday night extended opening of the VPUB. I'll be back with you on Thursday night for a regular scheduled VPUB. The theme... I was almost ready to commit to it today, but I'm not quite ready. So uh, you'll f you'll discover it through the social media channels. You'll discover it first through Patreon. Um, I'll let you know what the theme is going to be. And uh, I have really been enjoying uh, having guests on recently. I think there's a good chance that Thursday may be solo for me again, but we'll wait and see. Um, and uh, I'll keep you posted. Thank you all so much for your fantastic support and hanging out with me for another Sunday night. I've loved uh, being here with you it's always great fun for me i this is just easy and really good fun and when i can't get out to have drams and taste the nights at the whiskey club and whatever it may be this is a very very nice substitute and i hope that you guys find the same i hope you have a fantastic week i hope that you stay healthy i hope that you stay safe and i hope above all that you're having some fabulous emotional moments with whiskey and friends I'll see you Thursday, I hope. Thank you all for your support tonight. Slancha Vata, everybody. Thank you all my moderators as well. I'll see you soon. Slancha.